recording now. So, um, first thing here, taking a look at every single game is we can just take a look at our team comp real quick, and then our team comp is always going to change how we're playing slightly, and on top of that, uh, the enemy team comp is also going to change how we're playing, so we can yeah, think about who I've we want to orb, yeah, right, whatnot, yeah. right, um, who, like, we should be pocketing as Zenyatta, um, probably right now it's going to, most of the time it's going to be one of our DPS, unless we don't have, like, um, unless we're running like really a, a brawl comp and our tanks are just gonna be in the front line the whole uh, time. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get dive down here. Okay, so um, there we died because we were just standing too far on the open. We can talk a little bit more about that in the future. But just keep yeah. in mind that because they are on a dive, we need to either take one of two kind of position play styles. We either need to be playing insanely far away from them to where they we're not in dive range, or we need to be playing on top of our tanks so that we can get some protection from them. So what your Ana is, would be like where she's at would be a good place if you're trying to play super far away. All right. I kind of trying to get more used to aggressive style, so I guess I'm gonna just stay near my tanks more. I'm gonna peel for Hana. Hana. Okay, right now we want to be thinking about like what we want to be trancing, right? Think about Probably that. Probably a uh, rain shatter. Mm -hmm. uh, I should have been aware of her ult. <laughs> yep. It's probably going to say that EMP is probably going to be the big one you want to watch out for because that's more dangerous than a Ryan shatter on its own. So when we're trying to get the EMP, um, then what we can do is try to like hide and um, get around, like stay right behind a corner. So uh, that way we can kind of LOS it. Hmm. I don't know that he stayed over there. Oh, now I have a question. So, like, hmm? is it worth to use trans to it's save what? one person? Well, it depends on the situation. Are you saving it so for like ultimates? Oh, so, yeah, but what I'm saying is, like, you have to think about, like, are, are there ultimates that you need to use it for? Like, if they just blew all their ultimates in a, in a fight, you won't need to save it for any ultimates, right? Um, but if you know that you have to counter, like, an EMP, you're you're saving five people versus one person. Alright. Alright. There again, they got off a second EMP. We want to make sure that we are using our ultimate, like, you know, at, at some point. Um, yeah. Because the longer we hold on to it, the less value we're getting out of it. If they're able to get two EMPs, that's the, we basically could have gotten two transcendences in that time and stopped them from winning two different fights. So make sure we're hiding around uh, around corners and watching for that. Think about what ultimates on their team we need to be watching out for most. Right? We we want to be like that's the first thing we're doing when we're on Zenyatta is taking a look at enemy team comp, going okay, what am I going to be trancing for? And then that way we don't have to think about it like mid fight and we don't have to react to stuff. Dein Schutzengel ist da. 
enemy is engaging. Okay. Use alt and uh, yep. and freaking uh, kill at the same time. Nice kill, but like yeah. Also remember that if you're trying to use ult to counter that, make sure you're putting yourself out of line of sight of her. So you can basically just hide around the corner when you know that she's looking for it, and then that way you're not getting caught out by it. And you can just pr pretty much instantly press Q. As you can see, uh, I got here more work from technical, uh, mechanical than mm -hmm. game sense. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and yeah, we'll we'll go over some. I think something else that'll be helpful for you is um, ult tracking, which will help you figure out like um, when they will have stuff like EMP and other ultimates. But we'll go over that after over that after this game. Alright, so in that Didn't fight, in that fight there was a lot of downtime where we weren't really shooting at much. Make sure that like when we're just sitting there that we're always constantly spamming so that'll get us ult charge, we'll put in damage, we have the potential for kills. So whenever possible, unless you're like trying to hide for transcendence which we didn't have transcendence or unless you're low or something like that right we should just constantly be spamming down a choke point like this or uh, sorry this is like no man's land Okay, so um, when we know that they have a Sombra and a Reaper, right? They are very, they have a very flanky team composition, right? That this comes into play with um, understanding that like how we're supposed to be playing differently against different team comps. When we know that they have a flanky team comp, we need to make sure that we're especially paying attention to our flank angles, right? If they're running like double sniper for like for example, right? We don't really need to pay attention at all to like behind us, right? We don't need to look behind us. We don't need to look at our flanks. We don't need to really worry about that because we know that our we're not going to be having a widowmaker, you know, like coming two inches from us, uh, like from our side, because that's just not how the widow playstyle works. But when we know that we're up against a reaper and a sombra, right? They're going to be looking to flank us, so we need to make sure that we're keeping eyes and ears open. Um, especially when we know that, that, that they're running that, right? If, that, whereas if they're running a double sniper, we might want to make sure that we're hugging cover a little bit more often, right? We're, you, you're, we're utilizing cover um, to our advantage. And then maybe if we're up against a dive, now we're swapping up our play style so that we're standing next to our team more often. So against each different composition, we're going to change up our play style and how we're playing and the different things that we're focusing on. Um, and that's just one of the things that you're struggling with uh, a few times is that you're getting caught off guard by these flanks. Whereas um, if we're paying attention to the flanks a little bit more often because we know that they're on a flanking comp, we're not going to get caught out so easily.
Mm. All right, all right. Five, four, three, two. Yeah, Sigma. Attack commencing. Okay, so first thing we want to look out here is like, what's their comp? What are we trancing for? Okay, they have a Samba, probably going to want to be trancing EMP mainly. Okay, um, a lot of the time, assume that they're going to be running something similar to what they're running the round before, right? If they're running a Reaper Sombra, we might not want to lag so far behind our team coming out of spawn, because we waited an extra, like, five seconds before we walked out. Right, we want to make sure we're with our team, and us um, isolating ourselves and going out after our team just made it very easy for, for them to focus us. Open your mind. When you're just sitting there, don't be afraid to add in some spam shots just to try to what's called spy checking or just try to decloak her. There is disquiet in your soul. I knew she was going to do it. <laughs> Yep, and we know that like we're gonna be her first target because right we we're gonna lose all our shield health, which puts us down at you know 50 HP. Um, we want to make sure that we're just basically hiding. Even if we don't have transcendence, we want to make it so that either she needs to choose between us and our team. So we can maybe go in the mini room. We can stay super far away from our team um, and force her to like you know decloak to try to shoot at us. Um, so we can stand out near health packs, right? Because if we're if you're right next to a health pack, they EMP, and then you just pretty much immediately run to the health pack. We just want to make sure, like we knew it was going to happen, but we also need to have a plan for when it does happen. Okay. Not pressing tab enough, right? They swapped both of their DPS and we weren't aware of it. So make sure you're pressing, and we'll get into this when we're talking about ult tracking, but make sure you're pressing tab after each and every fight because you're going to get a ton of information on a tab, especially once we, again, we start going over ult tracking. But just some information that you can get that was applicable there was that they're now on McCree Bastion, which is not what they were on at all before, which is going to change our play style again. Now we gotta make sure that we're watching for the McCree. They're probably gonna be up on the high ground. We can Discord Bastion very easily, make sure he's gonna be like a priority Discord target. Because if we let him get away with too much, he'll go unpunished and carry them. Oh, huge kill. Uh. No, I should have checked my kill feed. It's hand. I thought I thought the hot killed me. Understood. Open your mind. Bad guys, heads up. You guys get a fucking shield. Well, that's unfortunate. 
Yeah, I'm like, it doesn't matter. Oh, now you're sitting down. Oh, what? We could have won them. <laughs> I don't know if they got gave up already. Well, hopefully they, uh, back. I think so, because you can't even leave early, because the, uh, timer doesn't run out until after the game ends. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, here you probably just poke a bit, try to get your ult up, because if they do come back, you want to have, you know, the biggest advantage you can, you can get. Top left, top right. There is chaos within you. Well. Yeah, I don't think it's coming back. Yep. Quite unfortunate. Is a oh, he's killing too. <laughs> no. <laughs> Alright. Do so uh, you wanna take a look at it or? Um, of, of the replay? Um, I don't yeah. think we need to. I'm gonna go over some in game stuff if you. I'm gonna stream, so. Um, right. Yeah, we. we Probably won't need to go over it just because we already went over kind of the m main points. Um, the might though I might go over it just to give you a demonstration of a few different things they could have done differently. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm streaming now. Okay. All right. So, um, kind of. We're, we're gonna go, go over a, different, a few different things, but I guess to start off here, we can go over just kind of some of the strengths and weaknesses that I I see you have just right off the bat. Um, first self off, um, a, a strength that I think is gonna be something that we probably don't need to really focus on at all is gonna be your orbs. Um, there's not really many times where I see you with like where you don't have an orb on something and your orbs aren't on like terrible targets and you are very good with swapping them to the people who are needing healing or maybe you're shooting at or your team shooting at. So your orbs are very good. That's one of your strengths. Um, your, your mechanics when it comes to just raw shooting um, are pretty decent. We're gonna go over something that you can do to uh, improve that a little bit in a moment um but that's kind of on the in the in the middle when it comes to these uh this kind of what i'm ranking you on here um i'd probably say you're, one of the things that you're going to need to work on the most is of course you mentioned this was like your your game sense and we can go for that and on top of that is was ultimate usage we did um end up getting emp three times in a row when we had transcendence for it so um that is going to be one of the bigger mistakes and or things that we need to work on. And that's going to come uh, easier if we focus on ult tracking and uh, kind of what we're going to do up against ultimates. But we'll go over that in a minute as well. Um, here, we, we'll start first off with just some basic positioning and then we'll go on to the uh, two crosshair placements. So um, basically, first thing we're going to start off here with here is positioning. Um, good positioning is the usage of cover, whereas bad positioning is the absence of cover. Um, if we are standing right here, and this is six enemies, they're all shooting at us, maybe they're ulting, um, and we are trying to run away from it, so we go over here, and it takes us one, two, three seconds before we're behind cover and we're safe, right? From here, they now cannot kill us, we're safe. Um, but... In that whole time uh, from us walking from there to here, we are dead. And that means that that is bad positioning because there's an absence of cover. Now this is much better positioning because from here we can shoot people the exact same way. Right? We can apply orbs the same. Right? We can ult pretty much the same. 
Um, except for now, it takes us half a second to get band cover. So this is much better positioning because we are using is that we're using cover we're right we're right next to cover so that at a moment's notice they use high noon boom we're behind cover they use bomb we're behind cover they have snipers we're behind cover right we can we have the option to use cover which means that this is good positioning and there's a lot of different forms of cover um you can use like slopes we can use pillars right we can duck in and out of this right we can reload while we're behind this if we're low we can duck behind it right use just regular corners you can duck inside objects like this right you can use the payload kind of like this where you're just ducking in and out of the payload pillar corner doorways right so cover is going to be really really important for you um your survivability and there's a few times where of course this is gonna be something that everyone struggles with to an extent um but there's a few times where you're where you died just purely because instead of standing here we're standing right here on the open and um uh I can I'll dem I'll sh demonstrate at least one of those times um, when we I'll I'll take a look at that replay code once we're done talking here and I'll just show you um, where you like you know where that uh, that's applicable to um, now moving on here we're going to crosshair placement so crosshair placement is if you're unaware with the term is basically the how you place your crosshair to um, hit shots better right it's using your brain to help your aim um so basically the big big first step to crosshair placement which i think is something that's going to help you a lot with just mechanic hitting shots mechanically is you want to make sure that you're always aiming head level now what we're doing is we're always walking around aiming here at body level which means that when we go to hit a sh like uh, a shot to hit their heads, we have to just up and to the left or up and to the right, right? Whereas if we're just aiming head level already, we just have to go to the left and to the right. And that means that we're hitting shots easier because now there's less adjustment. And therefore, when there's less distance that we have to travel, the shot becomes easier because it's more, you know, there's less work that our brain has to do. Um, now, the second thing that this does for us, right, is that it means that Every single shot that's just a spam shot, we're shooting down a corridor, we're just charging up a right click, we're firing in it around the corner, right? Every single shot that we're hitting now goes from being a body shot to a headshot because we're just aiming at a head level, which means that we're doing one, two, three shots instead of one, two, three, four, five shots, which is a big difference when it comes to getting kills. Right? So we want to make sure that we're hitting those headshots, and a lot of the time we're like coming around a corner into a duel looking here, and then we're hitting those bed sh uh, those body shots and just not securing the kill as easily as if we were heading, aiming at the head level. So um, now on top of that, like we're, we're walking around looking head level, so that's head level doorway, so we're on a slope. That's a, a slope, so we're looking down now. We're looking up to that head level, up to the, that head level. So we're waiting for them to come around the corner. We know they're there. We're charging up a right click. Okay. And th there's just a very, very little adjustment because we're already aiming where we know they're going to be. Right? We know they're coming around the corner. Oh, too early. Right? But there's very little adjustment because we already have our crosshair there. Okay? We can get the same thing. We know they're top left. We're already aiming left head level. We turn the corner. We're already aiming at his head. Right? We know that these guys are slanted down a little bit. We're charging up a right click. We're turning this corner. Right? Already head level. Right? Okay? Already head level. Okay, because we're we're placing our crosshair at head level, which just means that every single spam shot here is just going to be headshots. Right. So that's going to be a big one that's just going to up your damage and uh, make your shots more accurate. Um, let's see. When it comes to just you're using your transcendence up against that EMP, make sure that you're looking to duck around the corner because it is line of sight. EMP is line of sight. So if she EMP is here, right? And we're right here. Even though we're within the EMP bounce, we're not going to get hit by that EMP. And we can just turn the corner with a transcendence a second later, right? So when we know that they're coming up on EMP here and they're looking to use EMP, we need to make sure that we're just putting ourselves out of line of sight of it, of our t of it, because then she has to choose between EMPing us and EMPing our team. Or that, that might not be the best spot because what she can do is just, you know, EMP here and then still get us. So maybe something like this where we're now pretty much hidden, right? It's very unlikely that she's going to find us here. It's going to be pretty fat. It's going to take us like one second to get over to our team after she EMPs, right? So just hide a, like a little bit away from your team. 
um, make it so that you're out of LOS of them, and then just uh, real quickly pop out when they use their ultimate, because one of, again, one of the big things that we struggled with last game was the fact that three times in a row, they EMP'd us while we had Transcendence available, which means that we're not going to get nearly as much value out of our Transcendence, right? If they're if we're constantly losing it to the, one of the biggest ultimates that we're trying to counter, we're not going to get much done with it. Um, so let's move on to ult tracking here. So um, first off, just to confirm, are are you interested in learning how to ult track at all? Yeah, I've been I've been uh, learning previously. It's just that I haven't played for like two months, and I got back into two weeks. So right now the all tracking is a little off, but right now mm. I'm just mainly fake focusing on tanks and remember remembering them and mm. their timing. And then right now I'm slowly going into DPS and then healers, so I have like mm. all of them together. I just go like one at a time right now. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. So that's gonna be like part of it, and when you get really good at it, you'll be able to just understand the timing of when they get their ultimates. But there's a much easier way to just go about all tracking. So. Ult tracking, rather than thinking of it as um, predicting when they're going to have their ultimates, you want to think of it as uh, as knowing what ultimates they don't have, right? Um, when we know what ultimates they don't have, then we're basically just crossing off what everything that they won't have, and then we're left with what they will have. Um, now, we'll demonstrate this, obviously, here. We're going to use the top six um, enemies here as an example for tab, but the first step to ult tracking is you just press tab after the fight, right? Press tab after each and every fight. You want to get into the habit of doing that. Then you can see things like swaps, and you can also use this as a reference point for the your ult tracking. So we go, okay, last fight I saw or heard that they use nano, they use bob, they use window. Right, so now we know that because they just use those, they won't have it again for this next fight. Unless they used it, you know, like at the very beginning of a very long fight, which is something that you can also take into account. But most likely they won't have those ultimates. They just swap from a, ba a soldier to a bastion. So that means that they reset that ult. It's fresh, right? They don't have it. So now we've crossed off four ultimates that they won't have. Now, we're unsure because maybe we died, uh, maybe we're, we just didn't hear it or see it, so we ask our team, hey, did they use uh, Rally or Bomb? And they say, yeah, they used Bomb. So now we know that because we've crossed out all five of these other ones, that the only ultimate that they're coming into this fight with is going to be Rally. So, ult tracking is essentially a process of elimination to guess what ultimates they're going to have. Um, and when we know what ults they have, especially in a character like Zenyatta, we can know uh, what ultimates we need to be um, trancing for. It is the big one for us, but then we can also help out our team, right? If we know that they have a shatter, that helps our shield tanks to know how uh, to, to better block the shatter. If we know that if we have a diva on our team and they have any edible ultimate in the game, which is like half of them, right? High Noon, Visor, Farah, Tracer, May, um, Zarya, right? Any edible ultimate helps our diva know to eat those ultimates. It, it lets her pay attention to it and it gives her a better chance of being able to eat them. So it's very important that like this information like this information is very important for us because we can, it, not only we just know what ults they have, but we can also think about how we're gonna counter them. So when we're looking at their team comp and we go, okay, what's what's the uh, what, the end this is the enemy team comp, right? The game just started what's the most dangerous ultimate that we're probably going to be trancing for most of the time, right? Okay, it's they have a Sombra. It's probably going to be EMP. Now we want to be thinking about how we're going to be getting all trance against EMP, okay? Right. We're going to have to stay next to cover, right? Make sure that when they have EMP that we're, like, we can ult track when they have EMP, and then also we can make sure that we're, like, standing, next, uh, standing behind stuff, right? Getting out of our line of sight. So we're always going to be changing up our play style, based off of what they have and what ultimates they have and like the different characters that they have. So we just have to be taking all this into account. And then this is how basically you build up game sense is you understand how am I playing in these different scenarios because Overwatch is a game of kind of scenarios, right? There's going to be yeah. very little rule that applies in all situations in Overwatch. There's going to be very few of those. Um, Everything is always going to change depending on what's happening in that specific moment. What map are you on? What characters are they running? Who's alive? Who's dead? 
um, what ultimates are on the board, right? There's always going to be factors that affect your decisions. And basically getting good at decision making is getting good at intaking information and processing that information. So the more information we're looking at and the better we get at processing it fast and coming up with good solutions to those to that information the better game sense we're going to have right right all right so um do you mind give me that giving me that code real quick um because we can real quickly just go in and and i'll show you like i think three different spots where i saw things that we talked about just so you see a visual of what um what i was just demonstrating here yeah important the code I forgot to look at our code. I think it was of you. No, <laughs> hold on. I forgot to look at the code. You're good. Hold on. Enter shared play code. What the fuck was the code? So well, if you, you get the code, you you just click it. Uh, click the map you want to get the code from, and then it should say share. Click that, share. All right, it's at uh, 6G. All right. Uh, HF. All right. And then 1T. You got it? Yep. Arriving All right. at watch point, Gibraltar, ready. For yeah, so essentially, uh, the main points of a Zenyatta play is what's their win condition. Yep. So in this case, their win condition was the Sombra ult. Mm -hmm. So I have to make sure to counter the win condition so they cannot use it, and which cause them to lose the fight. Yep, exactly. Possible. Okay. Because that's a because that's a very big ultimate. It's the same way kind of like um, Nano Blade acts like a win condition a lot of the time because yeah. Nano Blade is going to be one of their most powerful ultimates and it's going to allow them to count the points. So if we're not properly countering that we're not going to be able to um you know effectively stop it so something else that we can get into is like kind of nuanced stuff which this is going to be apl applicable in a lot of situations if they have multiple big ultimates so let's think this is sorry i'm not i'm getting a little bit away from this replay here but let's say for example sure. the enemy team has a nano blade but then they also have a grav dragon right but we only have one transcendence um now we have to think to ourselves which which one do we transfer? How do we counter the other one, right? So very simple way that we can try to do this is think, okay, well, which one can we counter with other things, right? Because we need Transcendence for the one that Transcendence can be useful for more. So something, Genji Blade is much easier uh, countered than a Grav Dragon is. Um, a lot of the time. A Genji Blade you can use, for example, Whole Hog to boop the Genji away. You can use Grav to stun the Genji, shatter him. You can Sig uh, Flux him. You can hack him, right? You can stun, you can chain stun him. There's a lot of other ultimates in the game that you can use to counter him, specifically tank ultimates that can counter him. Whereas, for example, let's say they grab Dragon, are you going to be able to shatter them out of a grab Dragon? Right, right. Are you going to be able to, yeah. like, grab them out of a grab dragon? Can you flux them out of grab dragon? Not as easily, yeah. really. So there's less options to counter. Yeah, other so there's. Than using support alts mm -hmm. in that situation. Yep, exactly. So in that situation, okay. the better plan would be to say, okay, I'm going to transfer the grab dragon, and then I'm going to. Uh, and then we, hey, uh, and then we tell our teammates, hey, they have a nano blade. Hog, make sure you whole hog the nano blade away, okay? Because I have to use transfer grab dragon, right? Something like that. And then now we're getting off a, of we're using our ult tracking and our, um, kind of, we can tell our team what we want, like what ults we want to use, and then that way we're coming up with a plan for it, right? So, um, ult tracking is only useful if we're also coming up with a plan against those ultimates, because what's the purpose of ult tracking if we're not taking any measures to stop those ultimates all right so here this is um where we where i saw the first instance of like right um look at where we're positioned and then look at like the distance between us to cover all right and then this is basically why we die is because we're not next to cover so um preferably here 
we'd maybe be more situated on the right side um, because then we can use this as cover and if we need we can still shoot the same from here except for we can just duck to the right if we need to right um, the left side here is okay but I, I don't it might not be it's as good because of the slope yeah. Oh, yeah yeah I think the slope might mess mess it up slightly and then also like look at how much LOS they still have on you up on the high ground so they have more LOS on you here whereas here you can basically just cut off all the LOS just by backing around the corner so um just make sure we're not standing out in the open and then that's what allows someone to just very easily just pelt us from a distance here uh, yeah right there i was uh, taking a very i guess aggressive angles because mm -hmm. they didn't have any enemies that can really burst me down other than doomfist and then the monkey maybe doomfist monkey coordinate dive but like uh, yeah that's what like i usually like to be more open angles and, <laughs> and kind of become dps <laughs> Yep, which is fine yeah. when we see that. So we can't, 100%, we can take more open angles when we know that they don't have, like, long-range characters that can shoot at us. But we also just need to be careful that we're not completely leaving aside our good positioning because th that good positioning is going to keep us alive in a situation like this. Alright. So this is a Gibraltar, right? This is a map? Gibraltar? Yep, or... watch point Gibraltar. Okay, okay. okay. Yep, I and then and then there's the three different times here that we end up getting EMP'd out of our transcendence. Um, I don't know when the first one is here. I, was it was it last fight here? Yeah, it's right here. Right, so first one here. Right, we know we should know right that they're pretty much close to EMP. Right, if you look at tab, the majority of the ults are on the board for everyone here, and a lot of the time EMP is a decently fast charging ultimate. So here. Right, we can be in one of two spots, right? We know our team's all under here. We can be in this room, right? Now they're out of our LOS. They can't really choose to solo, like they can solo EMP us here, but then that's just a lot of wasted value on the Sombra's part. Um, so we can go in there and then we can also come in here either around this corner or we can try to hide behind this pillar, but that might be a little hard. Um, so probably right here is fine and then it just takes us you know a second to get out um so that's how we can just you know counter the cmp and then win this fight rather than uh, and then we have the trance for the shatter and then we all, don't end up all dying next one right um uh one quick question like how hmm? instant is an emp because i know zen's ult like it's like you are like able to you are able to because EMP has a cast time, so you are yeah. able to ult before it, but it's going to be very, very inconsistent, right? Um, even, like, professional players will opt for hiding over trying to, um, like, over trying to react to it because it's just such a fast timing. It's, like, uh, pff, half a second or something like that, right? Yeah. Right. It's, it's very difficult to... Um, predict like like to react to as you see because you get EMP three times in a row right while you have trans and you weren't able to uh, react in time so instead we can just very easily counter this by just you know being out of LOS so in this situation we have another EMP here instead of being up here in the same line boom we're just around the corner and then now we have transcendence right <laughs> Now we do end up getting being able to kill the Sombra there, but um, that also because we Sombra EMPs, like it kind of, I guess, distracts our team and drives them off points, so that's unfortunate. Um, let's see. Let's see. Now the other thing to keep in mind is we have not used an ultimate once so far, and the if we're not using ultimates, we don't get value out of them. We want to make sure that we're using them because this is the Sombra's third EMP. Right by the time we're using one transcendence, which means that we could have had two, three transcendences in this time, right? So that means that we just want to make sure we're using our ultimate more because ultimates not yeah. used don't get value, right? And then again, right, same thing. If we wanted to, we can you know just crouch here. Now we're out of LOS. We can position more on the left side here. We can. Uh, position on the right side where our crease is. No, maybe that's not the best, but we can position like back here. Um, because our team's so far forward, it'd probably be best, I'd probably say, if we were on the left here, because then, you know, you can just 
be in here and then pop out real quick when you need when you need to. So just again, change up your positioning based off of the fact that we know that they have EMP. Okay, so um when was the third time here that I wanted to go over? I think it was on defense still. Um, this is a crosshair placement one that I just like we I, I was noticing it all game with it with your crosshair placement, but this is just a good uh good spot to go over it, I guess. Where was it? Maybe it was in a different fight, because I think we lose this, don't we? Yeah. No, we do win that. All right. Yeah, that's when we get hooked from behind. All right, it must—it must have been earlier then. Where the heck? This is the first fight here. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to find this spot for the demonstration here. Um, If I can't find it, it's fine. We can just move <laughs> on. That's right. No, because I usually kind of have a kind of see skull approach where you look at the angles where you think they're gonna pop out. Mm. Like instead of like looking down while trying to shoot, I just always look straight forward where you think they're gonna mm -hmm. attack. But I totally forgot that it's best to have like head level so you hit those headshots yep. like, more consistently. Yeah, but it was hard for me to teach teach me that like uh, crosshair discipline where I had to like look at <laughs> like angles without like looking at the wall because I'm not gonna be hitting the wall. I'm hitting. The, I'm trying to hit a person. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm not seeming to find it, so I guess we can move on here unless you like walk out and do this. No, you walk out this side. Now. Okay. Mm. You know, yeah, we'll we'll move on. I th I thought. There's a specific instance, but um, maybe not. There's also here, I guess you can we can, you can see here a little bit. So just here while we're spamming in, all right, you can just see like where Crosshair is in comparison to them. Okay, his feet, his body. All right, keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting. Okay, we're still looking at his feet, and now we're looking at her a little bit. Just wait till we acquire a new target. Okay. Looking at him now, we're a little bit head level. Okay, we're back to looking at bodies. All right, we're just looking at our kind of angle that we're looking at them from. Okay, look, looking at his feet again. Right, feet. All right, so we're always bobbling up and down when we're when we're shooting, and then that's just gonna mean that we have to worry about one extra ain't like kind of um direction to, that we're aiming in which we will have to worry about when people are on the high grounds low grounds when people are jumping right but and if people are taller than other people right we can we have to aim at a different height when we're aiming at a tank rather than a torbjorn right so yeah um it but mainly for most of the characters across the board they're gonna have roughly the same head level we just want to make sure that we're aiming at that high level because we're gonna be doing a lot more damage than we are right and it's gonna be a lot easier to land shots in general. Okay, so um, why don't you go ahead and get in a queue for a game, and then you can let's go over and go over the next one. Host the game. Host the game. Oh yeah, I forgot to get a window again. <laughs> Hold on, I need to go to Windows. Goodbye FPS. All right. I don't like open queue. <laughs> you say I, you I, don't like open queue? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I like you only heal it, but I'm just so used to two three two now.
Mm -hmm. I'm not very used to it. All right, I'm actually gonna use this to practice the head thing. True self is without form. Nice read on where that Discord was. No, I got double team, not fair. I could have killed both of them though. The outcome is I not preordained. But yeah, so to go into depth further on further on the question that you had asked before about um like should I use my ultimate to save like one Reinhardt, right, who's critical HP. That really depends on the situation, right? Because we talked about how everything's situational and yeah. One of the big things I'd pay attention to is, is there a big ultimate that I need to save trans for? If they don't have a big ultimate, which sometimes will happen, right? If they don't have any big combos or big ultimates, then we're really just going to use Transcendence situationally and just look for any time that somebody gets critical or our t whole team gets critical, and then we can transfer that, right? So if... They don't have any nano blades. They don't have any combos. They don't have grab. They don't have EMP. They, um, like even shatter. I'd probably say is a little bit just inconsistent, and you don't necessarily want to save for shatter a lot of the time. Um, so you can pretty much just use trance in those situations when they don't have those. Just whenever you see somebody needs it. But right. if they have an EMP. And we use trans for, let's say, for example, they do have an EMP, or they do have a grab, or they do have a nano blade, and we use trans to save that one Reinhardt, right? We won't lose a fight if we lose one Reinhardt, but we right. will use, it's very likely that we'll lose a fight if they EMP us all, all six of us, and we don't have a trans for it, right? Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, I usually would, like, default to try to trans, uh, Ryan are like most of like CC ults. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because like those are really important. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I, I just keep trying to be. What the hell? Why do I have masters in my game, dude? I usually rely on. Um... <laughs> what the fuck? I usually rely on. Uh, uh, I kind of rely too much on my reflex when I'm supposed to. Yeah, which. Yeah. You're going to be doing a lot better off if you're setting up a plan because then you don't have to react in the moment right and then that's pretty yeah. much the difference between last game the difference between losing three fights in a row to emp or two fights in a row to emp whereas if we're setting up a plan for it then we don't lose those fights right and so here take a press tab take a look at our team comp right we want to take a look at it see like what are we running we're reinhardt tracer on us so we probably want to keep our orb on tracer if she's going in places and then if she's not like yeah. then we could probably just keep it on reinhardt but for the most part we shouldn't need to worry about our tanks too much if anna's keeping an eye on them and hog is self-healing right uh our win condition here might be shatter shatter bomb maybe no i think shatter Five. You find sometimes the win condition doesn't always have to be ultimates, right? Sometimes it can be a pacing. It could be we have to play fast to win, and that'll come down to like, are we running brawl? Are we running spam? Right now we're running kind of a hybrid comp where we're pretty much we're playing for picks. We're all looking to frag. Hogs looking to get hooks. Torb's looking to do consistent damage. Tracer's looking to get picks in the back, right? So if our team frags, we win the game.
Okay, they're on Echo. We should look to kind of keep Orb on Echo as much as possible because we don't have anything to contest her. All right, we don't have any hit skins, so we just need to kind of try to put pressure on her with the orb. Damage Couldn't get enough damage in there. I try to at least get like one pick or do more pressure, but I my I guess my target prioritization wasn't good. Okay, so we have a soldier now. Okay, um, keep our staff for me real quick. What what else are they on? I only saw the Echo and the Ryan. Okay, so also on a McCree. Zarya. Okay, so we, really we want to make sure with our trans we're mainly watching out for the grab. Should I let myself die here? I don't want to sneak in the back. I can stagger myself. Yeah. Um. At this point, yeah. you probably want to try to stay alive. But I, when you saw your teammates die, probably would have been best to, um, yeah. just go and die. But <laughs> at this point, it's too late for that. Oh my God! What did they? <laughs> I didn't think they'd go there together. I was like, I'm gonna take on the 1v1. <laughs> Never mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably wait to try to take that 1v1 until like you see through the walls that your team's almost back. Because now look at how far we staggered. Right. So in that situation, you want to die right when your team dies, or if you are able to get out, that's also an option. But yeah, dying there probably would have been the best. Yeah, the best decision. But the more you hesitate on it, the less of a good decision it becomes. Make sure you're not pushing forward without your team, right? Because then that ends up in a second stagger and that starts a stagger train, right? right? We we staggered initially and then our team died and then we died, right? So now because of our initial stagger, we lost the whole point. Right. So make sure we're grouping up with our team. Die when the, die whenever the fight's lost or tr if you can get out, that's also an option. And then don't walk forward if your team's not forward. Okay, now they're on soldier. No, oh. uh, my bad. I'm playing really bad today. My bad. <laughs> you're fine. Now that you're on soldier McCree, um, you really just want to be. Pocketing your Reinhardt, and that's pretty much it. All right, let him survive on the front line. Yeah, dude, I messed up. dude, uh, that's I, I, that's really unfortunate because I guarantee your team's like were really mad at you, and they're probably gonna blame you. <laughs> I know, nothing to play. I'm, I'm fortunate. Oh no. Well, no. Oh, we all, we all have bad days. We all make mistakes. Yeah, dude. You're enough there. Select your Trying to stagger and fall off the map, and then we're good. Yeah. True self Group up with is me. without form. Oh, that's a big oof. Goldie Limbs is one. <laughs> yeah. As, I think it was kind of on me, though. Yeah. I think if I would have been there, they would have been able to get the kill. Yeah, you just don't like to blame other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely, yeah, that's definitely a good mindset to have because yeah. it's, with without a doubt, I, I support that um, that mindset of um, yes, objectively your teammates can be doing bad, but you shouldn't be worrying about it because you should only be worrying about what you're doing, right? So even if even if they were, it was them who was the problem, you only need to worry about yourself anyways. Okay, here probably gonna keep it on our monkey or Genji. I probably monkey most of the time here. I'm keeping on Nana there because she can do my healing. Die, 
You've hit me there. This is not your time. We're leaving with us. You have a McCree. Probably don't focus on the echo too much unless she like is close to you or like she's forcing you into the duel because you're not with your projectiles going to be easily able to kill her. So discord her and then leave it up to your like Ana and your McCree and your other you DPS and whatnot. Mainly focus on pressuring the Ryan, like the their front line. I'd probably say. Don't make him! Don't make him! You want to wait ten seconds on Algama? Sorry, I'll get my nade for you, okay? Ryan has all. Oh no, Ryan has all. Unlucky, it's so slow. Way too slow. Nope, that was not your fault at all, because if you watch kill feed, they all died to the, uh, the, what are they called, dead eye. Can't stop one shot ultimates. Which is something, like, you can <clears throat> attempt to, to take into account if you're ult tracking, but that also is very, pretty, um, pretty vague. You don't know for certain that they're going to combo the high noon with the, with the shatter, because that's not a, you know, big combo that usually happens. Okay, we can press tab real quick, right? Think about some ultimates. They use High Noon, they use uh, Shatter last round, so they'll probably have Grav here. They have Echo too. Yep, they'll have Echo, Grav, and then probably support all side in, unless they um, they use some. No, I don't think they use Nano. Alright, so just make sure that as well. I know you don't have to do it now because I'm talking with you, but in the future, say that's your team too, right? Do the old tracking process with your team so that they know all the information you know. I can take her out. Was it in her town, McCree? Okay, we have Trance again. Probably gonna look to use that on their grab when they use it. Don't stand too far behind your team. Oh. That would have got me. Yeah. What? How did you not hit me? Run one, run one, run one, run one. I knew he was gonna use it there. Was, right, it, and was it a right to use it there, or should I just let so, it die there? So, that is alright to use it if it's the reaction. If we know that they have Shatter for, through ult tracking, and we know that he might go on a flank, or, like, if we kind of are predicting that, what we can do is also just call that out to our Reinhardt and go, okay, well, they have Shatter, Ryan, watch for it, and then if you see that you don't or you don't see a Reinhardt at all, and you're watching the flank, just go, right on the side, right on the side, right? Um, yeah, but right. it, it, I think it was fine in that situation because you would have lost the fight had you probably would have lost the fight had you not used it. Anyways. Oh my god, I'm getting like dived on this shit. I'm gonna suck that here. 
Yeah, because that was almost purely reactionary. Because I saw him and I was like, oh, he might shatter. So I just like just clicked on it. <laughs> I didn't think it would get me, but I had to do it last second because I saw him looking at me a little. Yeah, I think Zen's not good here though, because I'm not getting all the value out of him. What are you looking at when you're turning around? No, I was just thinking like, what is someone flanks? But that's why I just checked right now to have like, do they have any? Well, the other thing to keep in mind is you were, you just your widow was just sighting, right? You know that all of six of them were in front of you, so you don't have to check your flank if you have widow sights up, and you know that they're not there. Ah, oh, that was not survive that. Repetition is the path to mastery. Good shots, good orbs. Really well placed orbs there. Fuck, I thought we were gonna lose that one. <laughs> yep. So far, I'd probably say just like in this game, the big fault that like the the big things. There's there's small mistakes and then there's big mistakes. In our first round, we just made a lot of big mistakes, and then that is why this game's only drawable at this point. Yeah. Um. So if we can get rid of those big mistakes out of our gameplay like essentially like getting good at the game is getting rid of mistakes right we have to make sure that yeah. we're making less and less mistakes less and, and less mistakes yep and especially those big mistakes which are game like kind of game losing mistakes um those mistakes are the big ones that we want to just immediately iron out because if we can get rid of staggering we can get rid of you know falling off the map wasn't as big of a deal because we were we'd already been losing that fight but that's just another one where like you don't want it to be there doing that consistently um right. but especially the staggering one where we're losing an entire point because of our that mistake um and that snowballs us um if we can iron that out then that means that we are doing much much better in a lot of different situations and we, uh, we actually have a chance in this game of winning because they don't immediately snowball us the entire first round of the game and then that also improves like team morale because if we hold well then our team's probably going to perform better right and they're not yelling at each other in chat right so us not staggering starts a big snowball effect for us for the better right there's gonna be a lot of good benefits we're gonna get out of it Yeah, the same comp. 
Make sure we have a Discord on something. Okay, fair. I think our orbs struggled a tiny little bit. Um, Want to make sure that really the two main ones that you have your orbs on are your Reinhardt and the enemy Reinhardt. Because if you have those, your Reinhardt wins the duel most of the time. Because he has healing and the enemy Reinhardt doesn't have healing. Because um, the enemy Reinhardt is going to be the one who takes the most damage. And your Reinhardt's the one who is going to be taking the most damage. So those orbs are really going to get a ton of value. We placed our orb on Ana and we just didn't. Uh, we didn't pay attention to when Ana was full HP, which was like half a second later, and then we didn't reassign it for a little bit. And then also our Discord orb was just um, not on Reinhardt the whole time. So um, okay. just have to, you know, be careful of, of our orbs there. And then like we just discussed, like the the big fault for that game in particular was our staggering on the first round. So um, there's nothing in particular that I have to go oh, to demonstrate here so you can probably go like hop into another game right yeah so it's just now i have way more less at stake than the gibraltar game oh, there's just the one big coin <laughs> or a big one and the, the little the small ones i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try uh i don't know hope they can get her all right Never stop um what you actually real quick are you if you exit like minimize will it close out of the stream or what uh it's still in, i'm still on stream okay um uh, why don't yeah. you leave that uh death match real quick you don't have to leave the queue though i'm gonna uh, get you a thing real quick um one moment All right, here we go. So I just sent you a link. Um, why is it not showing up is the question. I got it. I'm in far close, fast, dive, raw. Yeah, so this is... The, the, the circle of like yeah. the, the, the team compositions. Mm. Yep. Yeah. This is essentially just a rough composition chart, right? This, this goes over every single composition that has existed in Overwatch is, um, is going to be some variation of one of these. Um, Right. Essentially, you figuring out what your team comp is and what the enemy team comp is is going to allow you to identify win conditions and identify pacing and identify um, kind of the distances that you should be playing. So um, this is kind of important information to know when it comes to game sense and when it comes to understanding um, how you should be playing. So um, essentially, dive dive's a little bit complicated. We're not going to go too far into that um, unless... like. You know, you're playing dive all the time, which I, in ranked, I don't think it's incredibly meta. So um, we're not going to go over that for too long. But just know that you're doing a combination of like you're, you're far away, you're starting far away, you're diving in close, you're going to be playing fast and slow in different areas. But then when you get onto brawl and spam and hybrid, those all are, are where you're going to come into very big differences in how uh, you're playing. So with your brawl, that's going to be your standard, you know, Ryan Zarya. Reaper, May, uh, Lucio, Moira, Ana, right? Um, you want to make sure that when, when you're in Brawl, your win condition is playing fast and playing close, right? Whereas Spam is the exact opposite. Spam's going to be your double shield, right? Uh, you, your Rissa Sigma, Roadhog can be in it. Any snipers, any long-range characters, Zen, Baptiste, Mercy... Right, these are all spam characters. They want to play far away from the enemy team, and they want to play slow because they do damage over time. They don't do fast, close range damage. Um, so, if you are on a brawl comp and the enemy team is on a spam comp, your brawl comp wins if they can get in on top of the spam comp fast, and the spam comp wins if they can play, if they can stay out of reach of the brawl comp and make the fight co like uh, stay slow, right? They want to keep the pacing of the fight slow, right? Because the faster it goes, the more of a disadvantage they have. So this is where you get into win conditions outside of um, outside of just ultimates, right? Right. 
Um, hybrid is going to be any variation of, of these, right? The, this is something like, um, for example, uh, you know, the Hog Zarya meta that was just recently meta uh, up until, like, they nerfed Hog. Um, that was a hybrid comp because it really doesn't fit in any of these categories. It wasn't Brawl, wasn't really Spam, wasn't really Dive. So hybrid's going to really um, fit most into whatever comp um, you are... Like, it, like, has the most characters in it, right? If you have four Brawl characters... Or if you have, like, three Brawl characters and and then a little bit of each, right? You're going to be playing a little bit of Brawl in the in there. Um, if you have th three Spam characters and then some Dive characters and Brawl characters, you're going to be mainly playing Spam. Um, for the most part, Hybrid plays most similarly to a Spam comp because you're playing for picks a lot of the time. You're playing to play Split Up. Um, you can all... Like, the other name for this would just be a Split Comp because... If you're not really focused for a single win condition, you're all going to be looking to do your own thing, right? If you're on Hog Zarya, you're looking for picks, right? You're you're mainly just all looking to get solo frags. Um, so you, you all stay split up. You look for your 1v1s, your duels. Um, you try to take the fight slowly. You can play... The, the distance doesn't matter as much, right? You don't want to play super far away, but you don't want to play a little bit far away from them, Um so hybrid is just going to re really be the big one that's just kind of in the middle and it really depends on the fight. But this is just important um, information to be looking at. So that's other things that you can be looking at, like at the very start of the game, right? What is my comp when you're coming out of the door, right? You can press tab, what's my comp? And then as soon as other enemy team comp unlocks, what's their comp? Um, how is our team playing? Like how should our team be playing? Right? Should we be playing fast or slow, far away or close? And then we can call that out to our team if we need to. Um, and then on top of that, we can think of like, okay, what ultimates do we need to be using trance for? Um, if we're on Ana, what, who on our team are we going to be nanoing, right? Who are the best people to nano? Um, we re There's just so much detail here that we can go into that you just need to be going over really, really lightning fast in your head. And when you get good at that, you'll be able to then kind of have a rough plan of what you're going to be doing for the rest of the game. Right, that's interesting. Because I kind of heard of it, but I never saw it in detail. Alright, so we're on Ana here. Like I just mentioned, the biggest thing that we're looking at here in spawn is who are our best nano targets, right? We probably want to make a priority list of like one to three people. Um, yeah. who's the best Ryan, target? Ryan right here, right now, out of this composition yeah, so far, it's Ryan. Fighting. Yep, and Reinhardt's definitely Sigma on Sigma with ult? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yep, Widow's probably not great, Junkrat's not great, yeah. both of them yeah. aren't great targets yeah. because, like, they require skill shots and they're, they're not consistent. When it comes to nano, you want to nano consistent targets. So, um, really, Reinhardt's gonna be the main one, and then, yes, Sigma would be your number two. I probably wouldn't... Honestly, nano anybody but those two because Junkrat and Widow are honestly pretty bad. Yeah, nano targets, yeah, I, so I, I yeah. try not to never ult unless like they're about to die and I really need them in the fight. Mm -hmm. Then I ult them. Yep. Or I ult Ryan to save because I kind of use nano to like for like to kill, but like to save as well. Yep. Yeah, because I can get it really quick. One. Right. We're, if we also if we also press that, we're mainly looks like we're running a spam. Comp for the most part, so we're going to look to play a little bit slow, a little bit far away from them. We're on the wi widow, widow Spam, Mercy Spam, Junk Spam, Sigma Spam. Make sure you're with your team. You rotated pretty slowly. Make sure yeah. that you're... Uh, and that seems to be a, a big thing that's happening a lot of the time too, even when you're on Sen. Make sure that when you're rotating, you're pushing in, that you're with your team. So that you get the usage of their shield and their protection. Thank you. I need a healing. Take your Oh, he missed his charge. Where's he one Why didn't he flash? Oh, Hunter's left, Hunter's left, Hunter's left. Nice, nice, nice. Careful, Hanzo. Oh, that was insane. 
So in that situation, when you're hog, or when you're sigma ults like that, when you obviously knew that was a lost fight, right? You were backing up. You knew that was lost. Um, that's where you just call out in team chat and go, "No assaults, we lost the fight," right? And by doing that, we're now stopping the dumb dumb sigma who wasn't paying attention to kill feed. Switch off sig. And we also do that if we're winning a fight too. We can go, "No assaults, we won," right? and then that way they're not over ulting and using ults in a fight we are already winning. I don't want to go in that ring. Nice. Oh, we gotta get on point. Oh my god, I didn't know he saw me. I res, I gotta res, I gotta res this. Thank you. Nice sleep. Good combo. Commence attack on objective B. Activating the barrier. I think they have Zarya ult. Okay, well, you know, when you saw the tires coming from above and, you know, going in front of you and it ignored you, just peek the junk right real quick and try to kill him, right? Because you know he's AFK. Yeah, I, don't, I wasn't sure if he was up or bottom. I probably saw him, but I just didn't know him. Huh, I've come back from worse. Yo, Sig, do you play Zarya, bro? You're really, really rad. Okay, so we know they use Tyre, they won't have that. They probably won't have mines yet because they j pretty much just swapped. Okay, Sigma is really pushing heavy, guys. Something else you can communicate with your team. And again, I don't expect you to communicate while I'm, you know, talking to you in your ear. But um, when you're in an actual game, when, when I'm not here, something you can communicate to your team is like, I'm not there yet, don't go in. Right? That's just a really simple thing they say, don't use your ultimate when you're down two people, right? That should be obvious, but Sigma has done that, right? So, twice. Yeah, just going. So, this, going. your Sigma's not yeah. fantastic, but you communicating that can help them out. Hold on, guys, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm taking care of you. Sorry, you're long, bro. You're going to be okay. Make sure you're reloading when you're just like ducking right. the uncovered like you were before. Every opportunity you get where there's a lull in time, you want to be reloading. I'm gonna res hog. I'm sorry. Alright, right, right. I got, I got, I got a. Oh. Man. Yeah, but I have survived that. I'm actually gonna win here. It's winnable. Okay, make sure you're ulting earlier in fights, right? The earlier you're using your ultimate, the less time it gives them to be able to win the fight, right? Um, if they're use whichever team really uses their ults first is gonna have the advantage because you're gonna get picks and then they're gonna be at the disadvantage. Alright. Sorry, you saw. Oh, 
I will keep you here. <laughs> Alright, we got... We got some good ults coming up. My ultimate is charged. Get out of the Alright, I got trans. Fire at will! Ash behind the fire hole. Get in there. Ball discorded. Doom, Doom discorded. Ash on our ammo. Up ammo. I should have gone. Sorry, 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 sorry. Alright, so. Uh, oh, yeah, we got it. Yep, you sit back. You don't have to yeah. push on the point there. Um, also, pay attention to what you ult again. Sorry, like this is a bunch of stuff that you need to pay attention to here. So don't like after we're done this um, session, 100%. Don't try to think focus on everything I'm saying all at once because you're gonna get overwhelmed, right? I'm I'm giving you like 20 things to work on, and if you're trying to go over all of them in a single game, you're not gonna be able to accomplish that, right. and you're just gonna feel overwhelmed. So just go over like one to three and then master those or get good at them and then move on. Um, but something else to consider here, right? Something else you can try to do is look at your ults too, right? And when you're looking at your ults, you can start to plan, okay, what ults do I want to use? Because if we're if we're calling what ults we want to use, then we can stop over ulting by, like if we have six ults, right? What's gonna happen if we use six ults in a fight? You waste all of them, and then they're gonna win the second fight because they're gonna yep. have out in four hours. Exactly. So we can stop over ulting by calling out ultimates, right? Hello. Um, and then we can also combo ults more effectively if we're oh, calling well. it out, right? Because our team will be paying attention to it. So, um, for example, like what we missed the last fight was that we had a we could have nano barraged, right? And then that would have kept our far alive. That would have been a really great combo because nano bra like nano far is a very good person to nano. I might get dragged on. You're covered. Yep, just watch your left flank is the really main one you want to watch for. I mean, you know he's gonna slam you and aim down because you know he's gonna. You're basically gonna be looking down when you go up. Yo, Anna's up. High ground. Anna's high ground. There, Anna. She's still high ground, guys. There, Anna and Ball are behind us. What's up? Traces to the right in the room. I, oh, do I res this? Ash peek me. Doom fist top left. <laughs> nice. The rest up top. Human oh, <laughs> Get sure, or, Who are we nanoing? Yo, Zarya, 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 Zarya. Zarya main. Yeah, so this fight, who, who are we probably gonna be nanoing? I will keep you healed. Probably Sigma, he else. Or a Roadhog. Does Roadhog vault? No, he doesn't have all yet. He's he's about to have it though. Yep, if he's 97, then you probably nano Roadhog, right? Roadhog ult's probably a better combo than uh. Yo, he's there, he's there, there. Get in there. That was kind of oh. a waste, but it should be. That's right. What did they use, sir? Scratch, you'll be fine. I foresee great things. Let's go to Genji. You 
going to be This one has Nice nade. For a pick pick? Take your medicine. Show them what I see it, Sig. Enemy C. Get back in the fight. You alright, Ash? I'm just behind. Okay. He's gonna blade. So you drop back. We're down toward. You're powered up. Get in there. Gonna use that. Should have waited. Save it for Genji. Genji might have ult. Never mind. Bob, 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 Bob. Sleep in one. I'm healing. <laughs> okay, very, very well good round this um, Asana, right? We didn't make many mistakes, and that's why we full held, right? Um, probably say that on your Ana, you do really good, again, like just going over strengths and weaknesses. Um, you you know when you're supposed to be using what form of scoping. There's no issue there. Um, you do again very, have very good mechanics on Ana, um, even more so than probably your Zen because you don't have to hit headshots obviously on Ana. Um, <laughs> I probably say one of the bigger things, which again like there wasn't much to go off there because it was kind of a steamroll after the first round, but um, probably one of the bigger things is just making sure that you're focusing on your ability usage because. Um, less so on Zanyata, but on, on Ana, um, your big, like how you leave an impact on Ana is through your abilities, right? Zanyata frags through his aim, um, Ana frags through her ability to land sleeps and nades, and she is really going to be thriving if she can land big, like, anti-nades and land big sleeps. Um, so something that like for example is like you use your abilities a little bit sparingly which is good when you're up against a dive but not as good when you're when they, once they swapped off the dive right um near the end they only had a genji and that was it so you pretty much want to be using like your nades and your sleeps to just absolutely destroy the enemy hog and their front line um if you can get like like three man to five man to six man like anti nades right those are how you win fights and how you carry as Ana. So just be looking to land your abilities more aggressively. But um, like, of course, like if they're running a dive, right, you're not going to be able to land that nade in those sleeps until they're on top of you. And that's when you want it the most, right, is when they're on top of you is that's when you want the sleep and that's when you want the nade. So that's where you would save it and be more sparing with your um, ability usage. Right. Uh, positioning is also uh, like pretty decent there right uh, again like there, there weren't any issues because obviously we full held right whenever you're whenever you roll there's not as much to go off of because obviously you did good uh, <laughs> yeah she's uh she used to be my main it used to be an Ana one trick when i started so i'm pretty comfortable with Ana. it's just like zen i'm just a little i just kind of mess up in the, <laughs> the positioning a little too much sometimes because i just want to kill people <laughs> so uh <laughs> yeah Yep, you just gotta remember that you you essentially get to kill less people if you're being too aggressive because being dead for 20 seconds really doesn't, uh, you know, help your case, right? It, it's the difference between, like, yes, you might get, a, like, one extra kill, right, if you're, if you're being a l little bit more aggressive with your positioning, but if you're alive for an extra 20 seconds, then you're going to be able to get, like, you know, have the potential to kill more than one other th one person right so y you have to assess like is it worth getting this aggressive 
if I like if I'm gonna die because of it. Right. Um, you can probably go ahead and get into another queue. We have another twenty three minutes here. Right. All right. Oops. Now my map. Now traveling to pet. <laughs> No dying on my watch. Yeah, I just mainly play Zen on a bap. I'm, I'm kind of trying to incorporate. I'm just trying to incorporate um Maria now. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I heard she was pretty good. Yeah, especially in a ranked environment, I'd probably say. Yeah, I just don't like her. <laughs> I, like, it's not that I don't like her, but uh, it's just. Uh, Oh, I miss my sh I'm missing my shots here. There you yep. go. Remember oh, there in <laughs> Remember there in yeah. that fight, you know, head level and then your those all those body shots you're hitting now are headshots. Alright, while we're in queue here, I'm gonna go refill my water. Take right. Taken the lead. You are me, sister. <sighs> ah, that's better. Miss me? I've got you handled. <sighs> ah, that's better. Hey there. Down for the count. Sticks it there. On can be attitude positive, lo. Be right back. Been here all day. Gene. What? That's BS. Not my time. But uh, Mara's she, she's a little what different. Is though. So. Is, you know, it's like most of the heroes like are more closer to like actual like FPS, because I just like playing FPS. So like, yeah, I thought Mara's not that boring. Like, I I just hate Mercy. That's the only one I hate. But, like, mm. I don't. Know, I just have more fun playing Bath on his own. Yeah, I can like frag the most with them. Yeah, I, I hate Mercy. I don't know how people can play Mercy. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're a Mercy mate. I don't know. No, no, no. I technically I used to play Mercy, but I I played DPS now. Um, uh, but that back in the day I did play Mercy. Yeah. But that was that was also mainly because I didn't I like had a bad computer and that was also in the height of Mercy meta and I like to flex and then essentially what happened was I I flexed. Uh, I was like, hey guys, I'll I'll like I'll fill right and this is. <laughs> Back when like you crew profiles weren't private and no people time, just they saw my five hours on Mercy because I decided to flex and that's yeah. what people wanted and they're like oh you Mercy main now why are you on not like what why are you playing anything oh, else yeah. but Mercy? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, dude, I don't I hate Mercy. She's so boring. Well, it's because she's she has a lot of technical skills like like you know the the jump glitch mm -hmm. and yeah, to be aware of a lot of things, but just I don't like holding left click and right click. I, it's more like MOBA. I like to play like more like FPS part of the game. Mm. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, tab press in time. Right. It looks like we're on a dive mainly. Um, I don't think that's pretty good here in dive. Yeah, probably not gonna be best with dive. Ana would be better fit with it. Um, yeah, yeah. Or mercy. Uh, yeah. Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. Thank you. Buckle down. Get it done. See. 
through the dragon's eyes. Okay. No, right there. Uh. Crit. Wait for someone to come back and I'll die then. Crit! Can I get some? <laughs> you might be so bad. Make sure you're positioning behind cover here. Right, whenever you're not shooting at something, you want to make sure that you're behind cover. Right, so yeah, since gonna your go monkey's going to be diving in, you down. need to make sure that you're in LOS of where you know he's going to dive. Right? You can't, it's going to be the same thing that applies to, like with Ana, or Zenyatta, or not Zenyatta to a lesser extent, but um, since he's going to be crossing a large space in a very short time, you need to make sure you're already in LOS of where he's going to be. Right. We got Ryan. Okay. They were a little too far on the open. Make sure your windows also go in, in front of your team, right? That way your Reinhardt can benefit and shoot, get get a fire strike through that too. You place it a little bit behind everyone. With your lamps a, very much alike your your general positioning, make sure that you're putting your lamps behind cover, right? Because when your lamps go behind cover, they can stay up their full duration without getting killed. Without getting like blasted down. Yep. I'm gonna go forward. You can stand. The, the Careful behind you. Can I put yeah, I don't know. Cool. Oh. I don't know if I saw someone behind them. Oh, oh, he's dead. <laughs> he's dead. I can't help him anymore. No one can hide from my sight. I'm gonna stand pale. I can't really pick what a hog's scaring me a lot. Hello. Hog's behind. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Try to feel for the widow. Right there, I don't know what to do. Like my, yeah. my brain is split. Like they'll go over there, but let's the they're getting probably like, in that situation. Let the widow come to you, right? right, right um, right. you can't sacrifice your whole team to go try to save the widow because if you leave your team, they all die. You lose the fight. If widow dies, you don't necessarily lose the fight. Right. Right. So let widow come to you. Let Run Zen throw an orb on her. Unfortunate. Yeah, I should have. I should have moved. I knew someone was gonna come up from there because I saw. I saw Widow die from Hanzo. I should have just. Uh, oh, as far as I remember. Alright, guys, I'm coming back. You only guys. You only have one healer. Amplification matrix almost charged. The fall of damage is weird. Rodhog's going above. Okay, you should go through this. Ooh, okay, I know what has to be close to now. Rodhog's flanking a lot. I have to be close to my team now. Yep. Okay. It was also, if you heard it, it was called, right? Rodhog's up top, yeah. you, your teammate said. So, make sure you're keeping an eye on the flank, right? When we know that they have flankers, we keep an eye on the flank, make sure we're listening for it. If you knew that Roadhog's up top, just like, you know, be listening for the Roadhog to be dropping on you. I have combo, I have ult. We can combo to grab. Yikes. Just like, yeah, tell your Reinhardt, like, when, when we grab Fire Strike through my ult. I want to shoot for you guys. Okay. Make sure you're playing closely to your tanks, right? Cross with them, don't sit so far back. You're not on Zenyatta anymore, and even if you're on Zenyatta, you're still crossing with your tanks, right? 
front. We are moving forward. Back you're back. you're with your tanks. When back. you're when you're just chilling there, you can send a little oh, bit we behind them. Reaper, just a walk on them. So I was telling Kurt to go. Do they have a tracer now? Yeah, they've had a So when you're going through open area like this, right? Just okay, literally hog Zarya. your Reinhardt. Okay, Zarya's just pushing it. I'm going with Zarya again. Oh, Mazel did not down to the high ground. Hey, good lamp. Unfortunate, Reinhardt ran to the side. Yeah, we, we absolutely have to go left. Yeah, the mode is not, she's not using it them out. Our Zen gave up. Fine. Can we go left, please? Quickly, quickly. Am I holding my shield up? Quick. Go faster. Our Zen, good luck to you. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, gonna I'm gonna knock back. I'm gonna knock back to you so far. Right. I'm gonna go on road hog. Oh, road hog. Alright. Right. I'm gonna go get on car. I'm gonna go push this up. Arisa. Make sure you're requesting healing when you're low. Right, that way your Zen can orb you. Um, when you, when your Zarya grabbed, make sure your target priority is right, right? Don't focus the Hog, because Hog's 600 HP, whereas there's a Lucio right next to him who is not 600 HP, right? He only has 200 HP, so he's going to be a much easier target to kill. So, whenever you have the option to kill a tank or a DPS or support, right, a squishy target, if it's an option, you always bypass the tank, because tanks only exist to keep DPS and supports alive, right? DPS and supports are the one who do the most, who have the most yeah, output, we, right? We they push. output the healing, they output the damage, tanks keep them alive. So if you can get around to them, right, because they're grabbed, they're shattered, right, you, you, you're you gonna prioritize the people you can kill easier, because you can kill like two squishy targets before you're gonna be able to kill the hog, and you're gonna get more value out of it too. Right. No right. dying on my watch. Everyone signed their life insurance policies. For first point. Let's go for first point. Attackers incoming in 30 seconds. Right. Um, make sure you're focusing a little bit on it, your immortality here. Right. If you press tab, you can see like um, immortality deaths prevented is zero. Right. So just make sure that our immortalities are. Um, Attempting to get more value out of him, I I probably say like the the two main things are just gonna be immortality and our ultimate because like those are the two biggest parts of our kit, right? Same thing as Ana. Cool. Our the biggest <laughs> things that we need to worry about is landing good immortalities and landing good ultimates. So um, shift isn't really an ability we need to worry about too much. And again, our mechanics are fine. So make sure we're putting most of our attention into just game sense and making sure we're landing immors and and our ultimate. You're going to die. Check the healer. Oh, Zen's probably going to die. Okay. Can't help you. Okay, there we had some awkward positioning where we weren't in LOS of our team. Then we also placed Lamp out in the open. Don't isolate yourself from your team because then something like that happens where Tracer and Diva dive you. So. Um, again, yeah, right, if we know that they're on a dive, make sure that we're either super far away from them, in a hard position where they can't get to us, or we're with our tanks, right? Yeah, right for for there, if we're just chilling up on high ground, they can very Probably easily go, get uh, to us. Winston. So, we may, we want to make sure we're with our tanks. Right. Something else we can do is also, um, keep in mind is... Keep your, your jump charged, and then when they dive you, you can just jump up in the air. Right, and then that makes it harder for them to kill you. I missed that shot. Alright. I'm going hard. Oh, 
Oh, we gotta play pretty close to knock this time off. He was out of mech, dude. Get out of here. How does he headshot me when he moves? I got a card, they use a lot, but that shit really good. Yeah, we, we can just can we get a Moira instead of a bath? We can just, gra we can just grab dragons quickly, don't, don't waste uh, well, time. Crit, why did I you use dragons? But, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to practice this path right now. Oh, that's unfortunate. Got you good as you. I'm going on back line. Make sure all of us on your team, we're lagging behind a little bit, and that just means we can't see anyone. Get immortality. Um, I can definitely use gas. Oh shit, I'm losing the FPS. Oh my god. I'm gonna go high ground. What the hell was that? I was like losing uh, FPS. Just grab this fight, we just have to follow up. Nice, you can Okay. So, we really want to make sure that we're just rationing out our ultimates here because we need to survive one fight for three minutes straight, so... Um, yeah, making sure that we're ult, like, this is where, like, ult tracking and ult coordination really, really comes into play because we can't afford to lose a single fight. Oh, I'm dead, I'm <laughs> Pop ults. That was what are you bad. saving your ult for? <laughs> We have a. Uh, we use it. We still were the last. Okay. Yep. So there, yeah. Immor and our ult were just a little bit delayed, right? Oh, that's so um. Weird. So that just meant that we got less value out of them because, like, those are two big abilities, and we're using them after they're using their big abilities. And again, like we talked about that with ultimates, is when we're if they're using their ults first. They're using all these big abilities that are getting these kills. Um, and then that means that they're going to get the man advantage before we're using our ultimate. So it's always better to use ults first. Um, so the longer we're waiting on our ult, the, like, the, by the time you use your ult, like, you pretty much already lost the fight, right? Because you were right. down so many yeah. people. I was so, uh, like, afraid to use it because I didn't want all of us to use it at the same time. So I was like, I'm going to just wait a little. But uh, mm -hmm. the two ult, the ults that we used that still failed. And we ended up dying. <laughs> mm -hmm. so and then that's just, where uh, ult coordination can also, like in planning, right, can also come into effect. This, like, if we call out in chat, hey, let's use this, let's use that, then we won't have to worry as much about, like, oh, do I need to use this? Do I need to use this, right? And also just keep in mind that, like, if you're down that many people, it you probably just need to throw your ults at it at that point, right? You're at right, such yeah. a disadvantage that you, and you can't afford to lose that fight, then. That, that it means that ultimate is necessary. Right. All right, so uh, we have four minutes left, and we're not going to be able to get into a game, so why don't we just kind of go over, like, a quick review over all the stuff we went over, and then uh, you can also uh, also open up to questions. Um, but uh, basically, um, in general, we talked about ult tracking, we talked about ult planning, um, make sure your positionings, you know, be next to cover, don't stand out in the open. Um... Think about, like, on Zenyatta, think about what ultimates you need to trance. On Ana, think about what ultimates you need to, uh, prep, like, you, you want to be comboing with or with your teammates. Um, like, who's nano priorities, right? Um, make sure that you're, like, paying attention to, um, like, what is the difference between our two team comps, right? What are Because you're always going to be playing differently with, when... Uh, you know, characters are different, so team comp affects uh, your your gameplay. So make sure you're paying attention to their team comp, your team comp. Um, we already went over like you know all the stuff on Senyata with uh, making sure that you're 
staying out of LOS of the of their EMP. Make sure you're thinking about what ultimates you need to transform. Aim head level. Think about your crosshair placement. Um, then with your Ana, we went over, you know, make sure you're thinking about your abilities most of all. Baptiste, basically same concept. Make sure you're focusing on your abilities because those are the most important aspect of your kit and how you're going to carry on Baptiste is landing good immortalities and landing good ultimates. Um, whereas just, you know, regular shooting and uh, and healing, that's really just how you do your job on, on Baptiste. That's, that's how you're going to be doing average. And right. you don't want to be doing average because if you're just doing average, then you're never going to be carrying, you're never going to be winning games. Right. Okay. Um. So, do you have any questions about anything we've gone over? Yeah. For. Uh. For Zen, if I were to have ult, right, mm -hmm. and let's just say this case scenario, would it be smart to flank as Zen when having ult, and then use it when you're actually get value, or try to get value from flanking, or ideally you don't want to do that. So to use it to get away. Yeah. Essentially, as a getaway. Um. So, I'm not going to say that it doesn't work, per se, because, like, I have seen that, like, people do this at, like, GM level. Um, yeah. But I will say that that's not a strategy I will say is very consistent, and that it, that's probably not something that, like, a, like, pro level Zenyatta would be doing. Um, but pretty much my answer to that is anything works in in ranked really i know a 4500 um deep pretty much dps only mora right he's like 70 percent uh dps and he's in their back line like half of the game um okay. and he's 4500 which is above where i've peaked right so i'm not gonna say that it's impossible to to play that way and to not like to win games but i probably would not recommend it because that's not my preferred play style i'd prefer to be consistent and you know um you know follow what like is gonna work most of the time because that's a very high risk high reward type of strategy so it i also think that's going to come down to like what like are you looking to just look to get really good and consistent and climb or are you looking to have fun like if you're looking to have fun then obviously that's going to be a really fun like um play style to just go all fraggy and just try to kill things but it might not necessarily be the best uh when it comes to just trying to climb sr because it's a very risky strategy hold on hold on sorry about that sorry right. hold on all right i'm gonna end the stream here